Good morning once again. Hope everybody's having a decent morning. I want to cover a subject pertaining to the border wall without really getting into what happened yesterday because let's be honest with ourselves, nothing really changed. So, I don't know if anybody remembers over the summer, and you should, we had a bunch of incidents happen where boats navigation going down was responsible for the deaths of several sailors and at a cost of millions and millions and millions of dollars to the Navy when ships veered off course and ran into other ships because all of a sudden we lost control of our own ships. Now, a lot of people are thinking that this ties directly into the Hillary Clinton email scandal, which I'm one of those people. So theory has it that Hillary Clinton, her entire purpose for having this server was to have above top secret programs access materials available to be downloaded via simply obtaining access to an unsecured server which any fifth grader who's grown up with a computer knows how to do. So what I'm saying is the only way that you're going to target this server is if you know that it's there, correct? And in theory, the only way you're going to know it's there is if Hillary Clinton tells you, hey, it's here, or you're one of these guys that just goes around and he hacks into anything he possibly can trying to find goodies, right? Now, hear me out for a second. If China, who has been known to donate to the Clinton Foundation through various means, were to pay Hillary Clinton to gain access to this server, which we can pretty much guarantee was going on, who's to say they didn't gain access to the programming and the way that our navigation and all of this works? Hell, this is exactly how they got their fighter jets. And the Chinese have openly admitted that they've stolen intellectual property from just about everybody. That's what the Chinese do. So it's not like this is against their modus operandi. Like I said, it's what they do. Okay? Now, let's just say that this happened, right? Now you have the Chinese provoking our ships. And let's, let's be 100% honest now. We're not innocent in this. I mean, granted, they're out there building islands that they shouldn't be building and everything, but let's also be honest. The United States has gone out and imperialized most of the world. We have bases absolutely everywhere. Can you blame China for wanting to have control over that area of the ocean? Because the United States literally has control over the rest of the world's waterways 100%. Now, they'd like to say that we gave the Panama Canal back over to the, the Panamanese or whatever, and you know what? We may have, but guess what? They know damn well who really holds the key when it comes to that canal, and it's the United States. Everybody knows this. So China is looking out for China's best interest. Now, there's a lot of theories of a Red Dawn scenario and all this other stuff, and we have to take this 100% seriously as well. Because for years now, there has been reports coming out of Mexico of Chinese special forces being stationed there. Not only stationed there, but quite a few of them. Now, we also have to realize more than likely, with the way that our immigration system is set up, there's already a lot of military-age men inside of the United States with the United States citizenship that are actually Chinese right they're serving Chinese interests and they're already here so let's just go out on a limb here and say that Xi Jinping is only working with Donald Trump right now to bring down the economy because it works out for China's best interest right he would play this game with Trump and act like he's Trump's best friend if he had nefarious purposes afterwards look at what happened in World War II it's the same exact scenario Hitler teams up with Stalin, right? And they decide, hey, Russia's not going to get involved. We'll even give you some support, whatever. We'll feed you. We'll give you material, all this other stuff. Don't invade us, right? And then what happens? 
Hitler turns his back and marches right on in. China might very well be doing the same thing to us right now. Do you not think that Donald Trump is smart enough to realize that this may very well be happening? Do you find it ironic or coincidental that the border wall is such a big deal right now? I mean, let's just say that these caravans that are coming up or whatever, like, obviously, that's being engineered by somebody, correct? <laughs> now, they're saying that 3,000 terrorists or terrorist suspectees have been pulled out of these groups that have been trying to come over the border, and I don't care how you're trying to enter the country. If you're a suspected terrorist, that number is significant, period, the end. Man, how many people have already gotten through? You hear about training camps all over the Midwest. Al-Qaeda training camps operating right in the United States. You have a bunch of bunch of militia groups out there, and who knows who they're serving. Now, there's been reports of Russian soldiers all over the place near Colorado to the point where that's getting scary, where entire communities are getting invaded by these freaking huge, huge Russian dudes. They're just coming in and raising havoc, right? And we can't deny that this is going on because there's video and picture to verify it. There's even been police chiefs that have come out and said that something is happening. And you know what's funny is that there's United States military bases right now with Russian Federation forces on them. Okay? But if you look historically... The Russians have always been on the American side, always, dating back to the Civil War, okay? The British very much wanted to come in and back the Confederacy with their navy and blockade the North and then reinforce the supplies of the South. Now, the only reason that this didn't happen was because of the Russians. The Russians straight up told the British, if you get involved in this war in any shape or form, we're coming in and we're backing the American forces. Do you think we really won that war all on our own? Do you think for a minute that the rest of the world didn't want to capitalize on that? That Britain didn't want to repay us for going out and taking over North America? Hell no. Britain wanted to get involved in that war. And Russia straight up saved our asses. And that goes back for even further than most people want to admit. The Russians are just, in general, have always been an ally to the United States, even before it was officially the United States. It's just a fact. So, does anybody right now think that Putin and Trump are playing opposite games? I don't think so. I don't think so. Who's the only leader in the entire world that has managed to remove a private bank from their country without being killed like Gaddafi. His name is Putin. Everybody wants to dress Putin up as one of these mobsters, one of these thugs, right? No. He may very well be all those things. He was a KGB agent, but let's think about things logically for a second. How do you get to a position of power inside of a system that awards thuggery? You have to become a thug. It's just a fact, absolute fact. But if you look at all the good that Putin has done for his country and all the slack that he's been cutting Donald Trump lately, things start adding up to paint a very broad picture of what's going on. And I think ultimately there will be a confrontation between the United States and China. And I don't think that Russia's going to stay out of this, but I, I'm pretty sure Russia's going to end up siding with us because what incentive do they have to side with China, who's an economic powerhouse that sits right on their border? Those guys are natural enemies. So when the system tries to paint the Russia, the people of Russia, the Federation of Russia, and the United States' as enemies, it's because... It's, a proje it's, it's all a mirror. It's projection. It's the complete opposite, right? Now, I don't know. There's a lot of other weird shit going on behind the scenes with all of these corporate leaders from China getting arrested all over the place. 
Um, I'm not sure where that plays into things, but there's no way that the Chinese economy can keep moving in the direction that it is right now without some sort of stimulant. And I've also been thinking a lot lately about what are all those ghost cities in China for. Now, there's a very, there's a very good theory out there that those, those cities are for an influx of Americans. Now, if you think about just the grand scheme of things, how many people are playing for the opposite side inside this system that have burrowed themselves into every type of bureaucracy, working from the local government all the way to the tippity top? Let's just say, if they were to defect, right, because they've ultimately been playing for the wrong team, in my opinion, but let's just say things go a certain way, and they need somewhere to go to. Do you think the Chinese government would want the, the United States population that have defected and, you know, turn coat over to the Chinese and are asking for asylum and all kinds of other stuff as they come in, where are they going to put them? Do you think they're going to leave them on the streets of the United States? No, I'm telling you right now, those, those ghost cities may very well be modern age ghettos. Because let's think about it, they're stylized in a, they're stylized in a western fashion. They're completely empty right now. They're not letting any of their citizens move into them, even though there's a shit ton that really need them, right? Why are they just sitting there empty? Are they planning an invasion somewhere and bringing all the frickin' civilian population and just dumping them into these cities, which are modern ghettos? I mean, it would make a lot of sense to me. And, you know, right now, in the meantime, it's driving their economy, giving their people something to do. But there's no way that the Chinese population is going to fill these cities. Because right now, for the first time in over 100 years, the Chinese population is decreasing. Okay? So that means there's less people being born than there are dying for the first time in a long time in China since Mao. Okay? So it's not like the Chinese people are going to be able to garner the population to fill these cities. Why are they there? You don't build something. You don't take away farmland from farmers in order to build a city that isn't going to be used. Just saying, those cities are going to be used for something. What are they going to be used for? And I'm telling you right now, the Chinese also just put out some very, very nationalistic commercials enticing their young men to enlist in the army and in these commercials they're straight up talking about invading foreign soil as though it's the duty of the Chinese in order to make Chinese culture prosper which is a very scary thing it's reminiscent of World War II propaganda and Korean propaganda very reminiscent of it well at the same time you see the rest of Europe wanting to become literally a European empire. I mean, they're setting the stage for something big right now. I mean, if Macron had his way, Macron would straight up build the European army tomorrow. And I'm telling you exactly why this is happening. It's because Brexit made the UN realize real quick not the UN, the European Union, sorry. I mean, the European Union realized real quick that people aren't going to be sticking with this system for long unless we force them. So what happens is, if the European Union decided they wanted to become a European em empire, one state, right, ran out of Brussels, what they would do is they would develop a European army. And this would consist of probably a battalion from every country that is involved in the European Empire. Now, of course, that country would dissolve. The borders would dissolve completely. But, of course, those people are still going to be tribal because people are tribal. And some of these countries have been around for a thousand plus years. It's not like you can just get rid of the culture of Austria like that. Do you know how proud Austrians are? It's not going to happen. So what's naturally going to happen if, Europe, if the European Union decides to do this, which they're moving in that direction undoubtedly, if they decide to become one state, you're going to see protests hopping up everywhere, okay? 
Now you see this in France right now, and if you notice, during those protests in France, which are still going on, but they're not getting any media coverage, but during those protests, you saw cops siding with these yellow vests, and it's very easy to explain, right? These cops are normal people, they're putting on a uniform, right? So when they go in to break up one of these riots, they're not gonna go in there and crack heads because that might be your neighbor. You might have to go down the block tomorrow and see the guy that you just cracked over the head. You're not gonna do it, you have compassion for him. And on top of that, you understand the politics of what's going on because, like I said, this is your country, these are your people. Now, if you have a battalion from every country, let's just say, riots break out in Spain. Do you think they're gonna send the Spanish battalion into Spain to quell that rioting? No. They're gonna send a Turkish battalion in there that has no idea about the culture of Spain, they can't relate to the people, and they're gonna go in there and crack fucking skulls and quell any riot. So if something happens in the Netherlands, what do you do? You send in people from freaking Ireland or something just people that can't relate to what's going on at all and that's exactly what they're doing it's exactly the plan that they've had in place for a long time now you see Donald Trump I think he's taking more of an isolationist isolationist approach to this which is what the United States should have never gotten away from to begin with we allowed ourselves to get dragged into World War One and World War Two. We allowed that to happen, it was completely engineered, and they're doing the same thing to us again, and most people don't fucking realize it. It's absolutely sickening. But there is no coincidence that we're bringing home all of these troops right now as we speak. There's no coincidence that we've been hearing rumors out of Mexico that the Chinese have been there, and you have special forces down there. There's, there's no coincidence there. We don't have a Russian battalion on a freaking base in the United States for no fucking reason. If you actually do your research, you're gonna understand real quick that the people we think are our enemies are our enemies, okay? And we've been viewing China as a friend for a very long time while taking it in the ass and giving them all of our fucking secrets. That shit needs to stop, and I think it is. But when it does stop, what incentive do they have to keep playing nice? This is the world we live in, guys. Yes, for my opinion on it. There you go. Have a good one. God bless.